Good evening. Don Juhis with you tonight. As you know, it's January. Things are really cold. And everybody wants something hot. Oh, that was too hot. <laughs> and maybe we want something a little bit easier. Maybe just some mm, greetings from Brazil or something. Sorry guys, there is a post box for you from Brazil. Interesting. Please sign. Thank you. All right, it's yours. I'm the singer, so it's mine. All right. Fuck. Oh shit. Uh, what was that? It's a hand. I don't. All right. It's, it's a hand. I don't. I don't. Oh dear. Oh dear. I wonder He's what. fucking dead. We need a medic. We need a medic. Wake Call 911. Up. Wake up. All right, we need help over here. Our lead singer might be dead. Yeah, let's see why he is. Faster. It's a fucking snake. Here's the antidote, guys. Drink this. Drink this. Come on, bitch. That's a good shot. Yeah. I'm back alive. It's fucking good. Hello, Brazil. Thanks for the questions. If you were on the other side of the stage, whom would you personally fangirl the most about? And which of you would be the crazy fangirl, the press miss, the half-naked drunken guy with Shiraz laying across his chest, your manager and the sound technician from Fazin? Mm. Fazin! The first question, but if I were you? on the other side of the stage, I would fangirl over Yanni and... Over Yanni, come on man. <laughs> <laughs> no you wouldn't. <laughs> on myself. Oh. <laughs> Me, myself and I. <laughs> Me, myself and I. <laughs> and which of you would be the crazy fangirl? Well, that could be me. The press miss. <laughs> press right. miss. Press miss would be you also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The half-naked drunken guy with Shira slain across his chest. That would be Anna. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Your manager and the sound technician. Nikki would, would be the sound, sound technician. Yeah. He knows. And I would be the manager yeah. too. <laughs> I think we'd just be. A, I'm a lot of things. We'd be the drunken guys. Oh, Anna. No. Yeah. Next one. Next one. And a wheel monster. Thank you, Fazin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next question is from Isabel. And recently I've heard an article from VH1 saying, Is a glam metal back from the dead? The first thing I thought was, hell yes, thinking of bands from Finland and Sweden. In my opinion, you're doing better than the old glam guys. But do you consider yourselves the glam metal reborn? Uh, well... Uh, not, <laughs> not so much, to be honest. At least for me. I mean, I wouldn't say we, glam, but obviously our roots are, and we have like similar spirit. I don't know. Yeah, going back to our roots. I don't know the word about reborn because it has rock and been dead. Yeah, it hasn't actually. been dead. Yeah. No, but it's just rock is not in the mainstream right now. Yeah, but I would say that we are keeping the rock music alive. Yeah, but and I think he's trying to keep, but it's not like we are some kind of messiah or anything. And I think really think that you know glam or hair doesn't re describe the music at all. It's just some yeah. you know it's the outlook. Yeah. But I think I just say that we're rock. You know. But we're doing fine. So thank you for your question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Wow. 
Is that so long? No. <laughs> Kelly Martins. Hello, hello. Even though you've been grouped together and compared with many other hard rock bands, I have the impression Shiraz Lane is quite different. Especially when it comes to attitude, compared to those who prefer to focus more on the bad boy appearance. You guys seem to be real. Thank you very much. <laughs> and maybe it has something to do with the message you want to share with the world. Do you also think this is one of the special things about Shiraz Lane? And also, do you think this different attitude helps you to reach out to people, even though most of your potential fans are maybe expecting the usual rock and roll attitude? By the way, this is, is one of the things I like the most about Shiraz Lane. Thank you very much. Well. She thinks we are of real. Course, well, we are yeah, alive. Yeah. yeah, well, I think, of course, it's a special thing about Shiraz Lane because yeah. not many other bands do this kind of stuff or spread a message or something like that. And the bad boy thing is such a cliche. Yeah, yeah. like you said, it's yeah. not all about yeah. that. Yeah. There's so much more to music and rock music. So, of course, we are bad boys. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We don't have to prove it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you have to keep it real, or you make know. Make songs about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You have to keep it real, otherwise you're just fake. You know, if you're a bad boy then you can show it, but you know, you have to be what you are, so you know, just be authentic. And yeah, be what you wanna be. Uh, be what you are. If you're not a bad boy and write a song about being a bad boy, that's lame. Yeah. Bad bad boy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next question. I hope there isn't a snake inside of this. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Uh, let's see. Alright. If you needed to choose from your bandmates, um, who would be your mom, dad, brother and pet and why? Are they caring, strict, messy, fun, keep you alive, etc. <laughs> and the question was by Rock Dog. Rock Dog! <laughs> So, well, hmm, maybe the mom would be Joel. <laughs> Uh, the dad would be uh, probably me, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Is the dad. Yeah. Anna is the dad. And he wants to fuck. <laughs> Anna is the dog. I'm, I'm the, the dog. Dog. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the dog. And well, yeah. Prove it. <laughs> 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 the brother would be, uh, well, actually all of us. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the brother and the dad. dad. Yeah. <laughs> Incest yeah. in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pallista tässä rusentuu. Let's see. <laughs> so, Shiraz's name seems to be all about a message. If you could send a special message to your fans, what would it be? This is by Lara Caldas. Well, special, special message, message to our fans. Don't underestimate the goodness of the universe. <laughs> Boom! That was deep. That was deep. <laughs> I don't know. Just be yourself and don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's one of the greatest. And enjoy your life and all the happiness stuff. Do whatever you want to do because if you choose to be an astronaut, you can be it. So and enjoy our live music. your life. Yeah. Blow shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Buy CDs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Next then one. Ciao, Tom. Ah, Joel, what's your biggest inspiration regarding <laughs> photography and illustration? Any tips for those aspiring artists out there? Advancing photographer. Yeah. 20 years. Biggest inspiration regarding photography. I don't know, I've been watching a lot of rock and roll live photography and that's what in interests me the most. I don't have any specific names to mention about, but everything that looks good makes me feel inspired and then I may try to redo it. Next one is from 
Aline, if you could choose a superpower only for one day, what would it be and why? I probably would like to fly because it's, yeah. I don't know, <laughs> it's just cool. Meh. Yeah, it's just cool. cheap because you don't have to buy tickets. In yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could fly yeah. to Brazil. Yeah. Unlimited touring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, only for one day. Only for one day. Let's hope you get there in one day. No, they are flying. But I need to. I need to fly <laughs> really fast. I need yeah. to fly. Really, be able to fly really fast. How about you guys? I, I think I just want to be the master of time, so only one day wouldn't be enough. So. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I would like to know how to play bass. <laughs> That's not even. That's not possible. That's a fucking superpower. That's super a superpower. Power, you <laughs> superpower. <laughs> Next. Uh, no. I write it. You have something? No. I don't want a superpower. I, I don't want. I want the software. That superpower that gives me all of that superpowers. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> I think the only superpower you need is your mind. Oh, that's <laughs> deep, man. Boom. Boom. All right, my so turn. you mean you you already have everything? Yeah, <laughs> everything okay. you need. So, have you heard any of uh, have you heard of any Brazilian bands? If so, is there any of them you would like to play with, Vin Vincent? And there's actually two questions. Let's take them both, man. Do you know any words in Portuguese? Diana Shara. I think they are obrigado. Lego. I don't know. About the bands. It's the band. Yeah, we saw them in. Yeah, yeah. It was. They were great. Uh, I think that's the only band I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess we wouldn't be the right band to support them. Hey, Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come of course on. we would. Of course <laughs> we would. Yeah, it was tough. I think that's you the could only play one. acoustic cover of their something uh, like yeah. War yeah. for Territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know any others. No, no, no. Do we know any words in Portuguese? Yes, no. obrigado. Any, obrigado. Yeah, any, uh, any other than this? We don't. <laughs> I don't know any. Hold on. No. Thank you Sorry. very much for your questions. Next one. Take it. Take it. Joel and Mickey, it seems you have uh, some Egyptian theme going on with those ank cross necklaces and the tattoo. Have you ever been to Egypt? Or what did uh, struck each of you so much about that culture? Cousin Mikoy. Um, well, I don't know, I just uh, personally I like the uh, Egyptian culture and the ancient Egyptian culture. Well, that's about yeah. the 699s, you know. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not about 69 hours, although, although I do respect the guys from 69 hours very much. And, uh, well, yeah, I like the ancient Egyptian culture and I think it's very intriguing and it's kind of deep if you think about it the right way. <laughs> How about you, Hugo? Double the answer. <laughs> that was too deep for Joel, so... <laughs> the 69 hours part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too deep, <laughs> Do you think about recording a song in Finnish since it's such a beautiful language? Uh, question about Aline Men Menezes. Well, I think with Shiraz Lane, we're not recording any songs in Finnish. No, I guess we might do something for fun, but yeah, just yeah, for our yeah. life, for ourselves. But yeah. we are not gonna, uh, I think, release anything in Finnish because it's just not for us. I think personally, I think that well, for me, Finnish isn't that beautiful of a language. But for me, like Japanese is. So I think for Aline, the language is beautiful because you don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you should study it, it yeah. might get beautiful then. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can make it beautiful, yeah. but we can. Yeah. Yeah. If you know how to do it, it's like a Perkalia. Finnish is really kind of melancholic language. Yeah. You don't have like it's not very romantic. You know? No, so. it's not compared to French or something. No. 
But actually, there are really good Finnish uh, songwriters or yeah. lyricists. Yep. Like, there. Okay, they, poets. they, yeah, they make it beautiful. Yeah, yeah they make so, it beautiful. Yeah. They know how to make. They know yeah. how to make beautiful. It's not tough. Yeah. And it would be hard. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. We still have. Thank you. Next question. Okay. We still have questions. Yes. Last one. Last, Last one. Question. Do you guys have any nicknames within the band? And if so, can we know what are they? Yes. <laughs> what do they mean? Yeah, man. And what's the story behind them? Man. Well, Anna is called Mantti. Mantti Mammona. Man's me is stupid. Mantti Mantti. It's yeah. almost the same. Yeah. Like kind of a douchebag or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually have many alter egos. Yeah, like yeah. Mantti Mammona and Mantti Muukalainen and yeah. Mantti Maat is the, yeah. the most Man recent Mantti one. Momentti. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. How much of a douchebag he is. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no uh, sense. Yeah. It does. I don't know. I think that's pretty yeah, much but yeah. Actually, Miki, his name is kind of a nickname because his real name is Mikko. So, no. <laughs> and he's called Smithy. Yeah. Yeah. Smithy. Smithy. Smith. Uh, Mimo. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, uh, there's one, one more. Actually, one, one more question. More. Can you describe in three words what does music mean to you? Magic. That's love, love well sex, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Well, it's really a hard question. Everything. Life. Everything. Yeah. It means. Yeah. It means everything. Three words. Yeah. 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 It's my life. <laughs> and oh, now or now or never. never. Milk the cow. Wow. Wow. Do 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 do. Thank you very much. One, two, three, four. Have you ever felt the hope is gone? Got no to go. Don't you worry about my friend, cause you're not alone. So, stop, I'm worried about tomorrow. Something about the coming album. It will be everything you wanted to hear. It will be the greatest debut album ever. Boom. Wow! <laughs> so, in this case, the medicine worked pretty well. But there are some special occasions when you don't need medicine at all. Sami, do you have a pet at home? Some dog, maybe? Or you know, I actually do. It's this. It's a small dog. Hey, come here, boy. Come here, boy. That's a. That's a good. Fucking oh, oh. Whatever this is. <laughs> do you have a pet? I do not actually. Would you like? I mean, you know, I've I've wanted a lot of different animals <laughs> during the past years. But I mean, I've just come to terms with the fact that I just can't take care of anything. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, I was thinking of buying a goldfish. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty fucking scared that it would just die the first day. <laughs> uh, we have a letter for you from Rauma. Awesome. From, uh... From Mona. Mona. What's up, Mona? Let's see. What the is first it? time I get a question in an envelope. That's fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> Fucking hey, dude. <laughs> Question number one: Why are you so awesome? Yes, I can't help it. I can't help it. That's the way I was born, dude. <laughs> I mean, 
I do not consider myself awesome, but thank you very much if you do. Cheers. And number two, imagine a deaf person. I'll imagine for a minute. <laughs> How would you describe the music you play by movements and gestures? Yeah, let's 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 imagine. Well, that's interesting. That. I mean, uh, I probably have to say. I mean, because our music is pretty fucking evil. So I mean, it's basically like worshiping Satan and you know, like just bringing the devil to life or something like to that. To the surface. You, you gotta get down on your knees. We gotta do that right yeah, now, dude. Yeah. Let's let's try. We'll just do that. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, just get on your knees. Then you gotta just, you know, like yes. feel the power. The power. The power. Yeah, I feel it. The power oh. of monkey. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the questions, Mona. Peace. So let's start from the far. Uh, when I was listening to that album, I just it came to my mind, uh, was there any any kind of, there was actually a progress between the albums, it's quite clear, but uh, to your recording process at pa Sonic Pump Studio, was there any difference in approach in uh, trying different things and stuff like this with your engineer and producer? Well, you know, definitely, because this was now the third album that we did with Nino in the same studio, so of course, of course, every time that we've been there recording, recording the album or doing demo sessions and stuff, we always learn to work together a bit better. So I'd say that for this time around, it was like the smoothest and the easiest recording session just because of this fact. And it definitely made it easier also to, you know, for him to tell us like, hey, we could try some new things. Because, for example, there's like a lot of songs where we've tried, you know, some some cleaner vocals and there's a lot of like stuff that he's produced really on the album, which I think is really cool that we're really comfortable with with Nino so and you have the studio chemistry going on between you. So exactly you understand each other. He's basically like the fifth member of the band right now. OK, uh, how much true is it about uh, Lost Society that you come up with ideas with some some new small improvements to your songs already composed along the process, along recording process in studio, or is it just you stick to the plan and try to keep to to what you already have in mind? Well, you know, I mean, this time when we when we had written all of the songs before we went to the studio, we had we had some time before before the sessions began. So so we wanted to do with the guys that we went through each song again and we kind of produced them ourselves in some way that we looked at them we looked at all of the tracks and we just listened to them and, and tried to see that is there some part that we could maybe change a bit is there something we should take away add something so we went like we did one of these kinds of rounds before we went to the studio and then of course when we're there we, we can try anything and we're always open for suggestions so I mean Nino had some really good points we did some really good edits on some songs, which made them just sound even bigger and even better. So you are not stick to the to the plan and feel free and flexible. In well, a sense. we're really flexible with stuff like that because I mean, in the end of the day, what sounds good is the best. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, how and where came the inspiration from for the solos, like? Like we hear this time, they are deeper, they are more like thoughtful, more le less, maybe not less trashy, but still they are going in, in a deeper way, if you understand. Yeah, I, I, I think you do because I, you I compose do. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true because, because uh, I mean, the previous two albums, you know, because it's a really fast tempo all yeah. the time, so it, it kind of in some ways limits like what you can do with your solos. That, of course. There's been a lot of, you know, just like shredding as fast as possible on the previous albums. But this time, you know, when it, when we had a slower tempo in some places, it allowed us to try some melodic solos, which was really like a cool change of pace for us because, and for me especially because, I mean, you know, I've, I've grew up with bands like Iron Maiden who have always like, they have really thought out solos, they have some harmonies in them, a, a lot of harmonies and stuff. So I mean, it was of course cool for me to finally get to do stuff like that, that I've always loved to do. And then, you know, of course we have, we have a lot of harmony solos together with Artu, which I think is really cool. 
And I mean those of course we've been planning for like a long time and and I think this was a perfect situation to try out stuff like that because me and Arta have been playing together now for close to five years. So we, we work really well together and our guitar playing goes well together. So I mean we, we got out some really cool harmony solos I think. So you follow at the same tempo like together? Yeah exactly and I mean because we're all just like getting better at what we're doing and we're getting better together which I think is the most like or the coolest thing in the whole yeah. in the whole band but but um, for for the song like the hollow eyes uh, hollow eyes uh, was there any kind of source or where the idea came from for this long cool solo and the structure and maybe something something that influences you to compose such parts in the guitar well, I mean, for Hollow Eyes, you know, we had the we had the song done for a long time, or we had all the riffs and the parts, but then we struggled for some time to just like get a really good structure for it going. And then when we when we thought that the whole song was ready, then we started composing like the ending to the song, the really epic and big sounding ending to the song. So, so then we started doing that, and then I mean it was just one of those things that we just jammed on the on the ending for like hours and hours, and we tried different solos, different kinds of moods and things. So I mean that was one of those things that came about like at a good pace that we didn't we didn't rush into it or anything. So we we thought that out really really like carefully. So it's like the result of a jamming, not not just I mean the solo in a music sense. It's not like a so from somewhere it, it came the influence. I mean, uh, not musically, but in spirit. In well, spirit. yeah, I think in spirit because I mean the the ending. It's just really epic, and I mean every time I listen to it, even now, I mean I get you know cold chills down my spine because because I remember when we were composing it and we were all just so stoked, and then you know some of the licks that are on the solos just came at once because you know you just close your eyes and you listen to it and you think of. And you just basically let your let your spirit and your passion Go. take over, yeah. and that's how they come so about. There is a, almost no yourself in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, it's something something going takes on. over. You know, you get possessed. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Sami, tell me, was there any weird experience for you during your last album composing? Well, you know, I mean. Most of it went really smoothly, but I mean, there was this one case, dude. Come in. Oh, please sit Oh, hey, Doc, you gotta help me out. I think I'm pretty fucked What's up. What's that? Dude, I'm hearing sounds all the time. Is that okay? Sounds? I'm hearing sounds in my head, dude. What a fucked up. I don't know, I never have ever met it in my practice, but let's let's check it. Hmm. Sounds in head. In my practice, you know, you are okay? totally healthy. So you are so okay. You are all right. Be happy because it's like new album by Lost Society. It's brain dead. Seriously? Yes. No. Can I do? Yes. Thanks, Doc. Be cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, dear horses, cats, and dogs, and girls, and boys, and all the other ants. Years ago, when I was very old, I used to work as a Santa Claus. And let me tell you, that was a pretty tough job, but one of my friends had even worse. The toughest of them all. He was a pizza delivery guy. That was something like, you could say, cataclysmic job. Are you hungry? Yeah! Let's order some pizza! Yeah! We need Pizza! Cataclysm pizza! Now! Pizza time! Oh, you, 
пицца? What the fuck? It is not как лис пицца! I'll teach you how to do real cataclysm pizza right now! People say that this metal is aggressive. Hell no, death metal is absolutely friendly. Even my cats like my peaceful company. Oh, I feel good, especially when I take a shower. Death metal smile. <laughs> uh, my first question would be like, um, uh, when I was listening to Cataclysm and uh, I, I thought that it's not like every other band in death metal or any kind of genre. I, I don't like tags on, mm -hmm. on this, but anyway, we, we should call it somehow. Um, so would you, would you agree that uh, lyrics of Cataclysm is more like conscious and uh, uh, you realize issues that others actually don't touch upon and in their songs and uh, that in 80s or late 80s and beginning of 90s death metal scene was not uh, uh, going into that kind mm -hmm. of lyrics they were just using some other stuff and uh, it's it's actually cataclysm that's mainly de dealing with ma what matters. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we want to talk about stuff that matters to us. Like it's uh, every song has has a deep meaning, sometimes deeper than it looks when you first look at the lyrics. Because we also make it in a way that like every, everybody can kind of understand and relate to it. And also sometimes we add like a little bit of uh, maybe fantasy element to kind of or poetry to, to, to a certain subject but like all the the subjects are very uh, are very deep on the album and like the concept on the new uh, on the new album of Ghost and Gods we were what we wanted to illustrate was the the, the, the like the, the struggle between like uh, religion science and all this stuff and people's belief and we're like we're not really religious people and the band were more like uh, analyzing everything and see how life works and, and, and stuff and we like we realize like if people like do crazy things on certain beliefs while others are just like no this is this because of that and they're more like a uh, scientific with with things and uh, we like the new album is basically a concept like of the the the, the, the struggle between both worlds and, and uh, that was what we had uh, as a first idea, but then we go into different subjects like from drug abuse to uh, like personal growth to like uh, the black sheep, which, which is pretty self-explanatory, which most metal heads feel like in, in, in growing up. A lot of times you feel like you're the only one of your kind where everybody else is different in the world. And, and I think you can re we all relate to that. So that's the song we wrote. For us, also as a band, because we feel musically and lyrically, sometimes we're, we're categorized death metal, but we feel we're kind of a, also a black sheep in, in the scene because we're so different, yet we're we're heavy and we have our own like sound and, and style, and it's hard sometimes to associate ourselves with other bands because uh, we not we're not sure exactly where we fit in the scene, but we have. Our fans that come out every night and support and and, and, and like uh, we have we kind of created our own world inside like the rest of the metal scene and, and which is great but uh, it's also about that like 
there's so many subjects on the record but there's that's the main main lines but yeah the lyrics are really important to us and we, we it, it means something to us if we put it into words <laughs> Look, the, the song Breaching the Asylum, uh, it's like the words uh, there were like, we've lost compassion. Is it like, it came to me that uh, I've uh, watched on YouTube some Native American from, mm -hmm. from Canada, I guess, what he was, and he was like talking so peaceful stuff and saying that, yes, we, we've lost compassion. And he was saying that the, the root of it is uh, st starts inside of each of us, not, mm -hmm. not from somewhere. And if we try to make... Uh, to bring mission to the world or to improve it. So we, st we have to start from inside, not from outside and help, I, help penguins uh, in Antarctica or go to somewhere. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, I, if, like, like you're, you, you cannot change the world as an individual because it's too big, too complex and too many people thinking different things. And, and it's all right that it is the way it is because it's just like, <laughs> We're millions of people with millions of different minds and millions of different views of how things should be and how you should behave as a person. But I think as a human being, it's important to uh, just if you do the best for yourself, like according to your own belief, like what you feel is right. And I, I'm the type of person that thinks that like doing right or good around me it makes me feel good. I don't do it because I'm religious or because it's my belief as a some kind of spiritual like mission I, I, I do it just because it makes me feel good and I think that's how every human being should behave but I mean you lead by example and hopefully people around you pick up on that vibe and then it creates a bigger um, movement but I think at least if you do it for yourself or the people around you at least your world is going to be in some sort of peace environment and, and I think that's important at least if you can have that in, in the world we live in uh, you will live a better happier life I'm sure <laughs> what's your favorite video from the last album because you have all songs uh, accompanied by a video. Yes. So, what's your favorite? My personal song? favorite. I, I really like the Die Insect one. It's kind of like um, it, it, it. It it looks kind of like a, a B side compared to some other of the videos, but the meaning to me means a lot, and I think it came out pretty uh, evidently on the on, on on screen with the images and stuff. And I really like the song as well, and mixed with the images, I think it was a great video. Yeah, it is. And uh, thy serp serpent's tongue, it's uh, innocence dies, there are words there. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is innocence to you, I mean, in, in a bigger sense, like, <clears throat> like uh, uh, the kids grow up and they uh, the, the adults, they lose that feeling of, yeah, of, I think, of I think being you, alive. You lose that innocence. Like, because of the cynicism of the world, I guess you kind of, like, I feel, I, I feel like uh, if you grew up, when you get to grow up in the adult world and you keep seeing how things are and, and, and what make, makes people, like, um, like, go after the wrong things. Because for me, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that, let's say, would do anything to, to get the money or do anything to... To get the women, or or, or or for women, the men, and or vice versa. And there's a lot of games that gets played, and, and in the end, I think uh, it's the the stuff you pursue. It's not really what's gonna make you happy in the end. And and I think if you can maintain that youth of the innocence of like when you were a kid or a teenager, and all the it makes you uh, at least makes you stand out against. That that cynicism and I that's how I see it when I when I think innocence like I, I think it's important to try to keep that the inner child alive. So I still feel like I I'm 40 years old now, but I still feel I'm 12 inside and and I try to keep it like that. But yeah. sometimes it's hard because it's, things happen and it makes you makes you angry and, and like 
there's some of the stuff there's nothing you can change because it's just the way things are but some other things at least the way you think about it for yourself you can at least change that and, and see it in a different way your, your smile if i dare to say it looks like a like like a younger young younger kid you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like you don't look like 40. awesome thank you <laughs> Feels like uh, uh, your music and lyrics as well. Uh, it's like a self-medication for each of you in a band. Mm -hmm. Is it? Really? I mean, like sometimes, like it's also a way to, uh, as an artist, like I feel you, you, you get a voice that that's heard by a lot of people because through the music and and, and, and all the the channels, you, the, the people that follow that follows your art, and it's important to to. To talk, about, I mean, to me, like, if I if I understand your question correctly, is I feel it's important to. I mean, you get you get rid of of um, anger of rage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. You 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 like sometimes you, it's, it's a cleansing, yeah. like Release especially of because we're we're a, like a an extreme metal band, and like to put all those emotions of anger out of you it's like it's like a cleansing it's like something happens and makes you really mad and purifying and you're like okay i'm gonna write a song about that i i can't do nothing about the situation because it's the way it is but at least i can write a song about it and try to release the so emotions are, that way yeah. and and at the same time it's kind of if if the song works and people like it for me it's a little victory of saying okay <laughs> so you accept the the circumstances through releasing your emotions in the song exactly like, uh, <laughs> yeah you uh, don't uh, keep it inside and flame burning burning yeah, until yeah, it it's explodes good to play it every night because sometimes it makes me think like uh, uh, the, the asshole that did this and you're like <laughs> <laughs> you have a thousand people like chanting the lyrics in front of you it makes you feel better <laughs> <laughs> Was there a case which makes you smile and maybe a laugh provoking one uh, from the past, from tours, from from your life, maybe apart from the band and just yeah, any case? I, I'm which just happy that we stick to our, ourself in a sense that we didn't change our music to to try to, to get more famous or to try to... I think the success came by staying ourselves and doing what we do and try to improve our uh, our abilities at what we do and and I'm that's something that makes me happy and and uh, and in the end when I look at the last 20 years of our, of our career and uh, we we work really hard but at the same time it was fun and it was an evolution and I'm, I'm proud that I didn't sell out my soul to to do this and it was natural it was you it was, it was natural yeah people mm -hmm. like who we are as persons and I think it's for me it makes me feel good so you can say it's 100% Jean, Jean Francois yeah, behind exactly, behind exactly, that exactly like <laughs> I stand behind all the songs we wrote and I I, I do uh, just because uh, every time we put out an album it was the best we could do at that time like we gave everything and it, that's what it that's what happened it's like a kid you know you put everything into it and you gave birth and then it's there and you did your best <laughs> you still do your best afterwards to make it grow and some of them grew stronger and healthier than others and others are like uh, I, I, I say I'd say uh, they like they, they, they grew old not as well and it's normal it's part of the process and I appreciate every one of them like the same and I put my efforts and and my um, I, I back them up with 100% just because we did the best we could at that time. Okay, look, um, death is, is uh, the theme that is touched upon a lot in lyrics of mm -hmm. Cataclysm. And, uh, for you personally, uh, okay, I understand we can't experience death before we die yeah. physically, but uh, mentally, is it for you a mystery or is it something that you avoid uh, thinking about? No, and I, I actually love thinking about it and that's why we came up with all these concepts like like the last album Waiting for the End to Come it was about like like uh, just living your life just because you don't know what happens when you die and like 
whatever it is, I'll, I'll, we're all going to figure it out whenever it happens. And they, either there's nothing, either there's like this soul of peril in the universe, and then you transfer into something else, maybe reincarnation, maybe. I, I, I mean, to me, all those theories, they all make sense, but who knows what's, what that really happens. We, we will only find out when we get there. And, and my message to everyone according to that thought process would be that like just do the best you can while you're alive because who knows <laughs> but then we'll figure it out when it happens yeah maybe it's a journey maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's a maybe it's another journey maybe it's the end who knows like yeah i i i, I just i keep all the options open in my head like, accept it know, exactly. <laughs> right. Have you ever wanted to play another kind of music apart from the band and uh, apart from Cataclysm, something maybe... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I also have my recording studio in, in Texas, so I, uh, I I work with a lot of other artists, like recording, producing and arranging, stuff like that, and I, I love different genres, and I would I also I almost consider joining other... Uh, bands or artists in different genres but the problem is with cataclysm we're such a touring machine that it's like when i have free time i want to also have a family at home my, my daughter my wife and i want to spend time with them so i'm trying to separate both both world and like do like say uh, half the year i do music and the other half the year i concern my family my, my kid and, uh, w would you be able uh how old is your kid uh, what, what, she's uh, 14 months now. 14 months. Yeah. So the question will be quite quite applicable. Uh, would you be able to compose a lullaby for the kid? Yeah, probably. I, I could show, would it? Would it? Like, yeah, you yeah, did it. it probably yeah. wouldn't be metal. It would be like a yeah. So it was guitars and piano and stuff. And it wasn't like cataclysm kind of lullaby, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I can play. All, I'm classically trained on guitars. I can play all kinds of different stuff. So. It's uh, I, I would surely do something different, but I think like for any situation, you do your best with the sounds and the instruments you have, and you, you go for that genre or that genre. <laughs> Do you rec uh, recall any case in your life or any event which uh, resulted in uh, composing a song? Yeah, I mean, many different things happen. Sometimes it's just, like I said, some, somebody that pisses you off real bad, like uh, whether it's a friend that betrays you or sometimes just a relationship with an ex-girlfriend or something and it ends up sour and it makes you angry for certain reasons and you just put it inside a song or but can it be like that, can yeah. it be positive uh, yeah, also, uh thing that influences also yeah yeah there's i mean there's no for some reason it, it always end up being the negative stuff that comes out first because we, we're playing angry music but at the same time uh yeah sometimes we just it's an outlook on life or sometimes like you feel really good about something that happened and you're like, yeah, like I pick up my guitar, I'm in a good mood, I'll write some music and something really cool comes up and ends up on the record, and for sure. I have one uh, idea. Could you draw a dog to me? Because it's like, the magazine is called Rock Dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Phew, that was pretty cataclysmic, wasn't it? Oh, finger. Uh, as I said earlier, it's January. Everybody's dreaming of summer, except for penguins, maybe. Uh, anyway, in summer, everything is hot, and the warmth makes the soil pretty soft. And that, if something, is ideal for grave digging. You address a lot to the topics of uh, of the past, of the past times, like uh, King Arthur and uh, uh, Scottish uh, things and all the stuff. But um, these days, what's on your mind now uh, for the next uh, album or coming songs? Is it something simpler, something easier than those concept albums, which, like you said, 
limit the space for creativity. But something easier like maybe a journalist coming for after the show and pissing you off, taking your time away, no. like me. <laughs> no, it's, uh, the next album will be uh, like the return of the Reap album. Uh, very simple lyrics, no concept album. And we go in this way. I think we, I don't know if we do another concept album in the future, but there's nothing planned for the next record and for the second next record. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I don't think uh, we stopped with uh, the Clash of the Gods album will be the last for a long time. One uh, question from the band, uh, from the vocal band called Imandra. It says, um, it's asked you, uh, what was earlier, a music or a human being? I think uh, it was uh, the music was earlier because I think that, that all, also animals have some kind of music. Then uh, the, the dolphins are singing, and uh, I think there was uh, before the human beings there was music. Yeah. So everything sings if you have ears yeah, for that. Yeah, it was the sound of, of the nature. Yeah? It was uh, before the human beings, definitely. Uh, if there was a world flood, what would you take in your boat uh, and why? My wife, my son, and. Uh, and uh, Maybe your band? Yeah, no, no not my band. Uh, the band is very important, but not uh, to bring them on an island. Uh, some cool uh, CD, CDs, some older CDs from that Zeppelin, and a uh, good music box. What's in your ears these days? Yeah. What, what do you listen to? Oh, I listen to very old stuff uh, from the 70s, from the 80s. But also like pop, some pop stuff like Adele or something. I'm, I'm totally open in different music styles. Uh, would you agree and, or would you kindly comment on this that civilization is like a nice word, like a nice shape, but the content and the core idea behind it is still like in those barbarian times when uh, people are trying to bring peace by methods of war. Yeah, I think uh, that is... Uh, everybody, every human being has this dark side. And uh, I think a lot of people fight for their religion because they think that it's the only one on, on Earth. Uh, I think that people uh, nowadays, or, or since human beings are on Earth, uh, uh, are not really respectful with each, each other yeah? because uh, everybody thinks he's the right guy or everybody thinks he needs a force over the other guys or for me it's very uh, yeah difficult to live these days because uh, it's not really safe yeah? how, when did you start in in the 80s how how was it for you it was that hard time to make music like this and to go with ideas like this and even to have the name of the band like Grave Digger. Yeah, we never thought in the 80s so much like we do now. Uh, we were young, we were drunken all the time and uh, yeah, life was much easier, I think, uh, at this time. Because you did, didn't think about it, you, didn't have no, you had no internet, the only uh, news where you got the news is in the newspapers or radio or TV or and the internet is uh, on the one side it's uh, it's a uh, it's a pain in the ass but on the other side they, you can use it also for for spread uh, uh, the music to, to to everywhere you know and, uh, but uh, nowadays it's uh, living is more difficult I think. but uh, you you said about internet i i wonder um, do, doesn't it uh, reduce the chemistry between people this e communication uh, yeah, if we, can, if we compare it, it yeah. to paper letters, yeah, to, yeah. to writing, Definitely. it's a it's a stop, uh, it's a blockade of communication, you know. And uh, I I, uh, I stopped my private Facebook account uh, since second uh, of January because I want if I want to talk to people, I want to call them or to write them uh, or they a will. letter or <laughs> yeah. meet them and not uh, give them a like on Facebook, you know. So uh, I stopped it and I use it only for, for the music, for the band, uh, not on my private side anymore. Do you get any post letters, like traditional way, in, in paper or...? Yeah, for sure, but it was more or less in the last year since uh, we have all this email and, uh, and uh, Facebook stuff. Yeah, but it's like more pleasant to get one like yeah, this. Yeah, I, I like to give a, get a card from, from a friend who is on holiday somewhere and uh, I send when we are on tour with uh, Blind Guardian in the US, I send a lot of uh, postcards to my son. And uh, You are also a photographer and uh, a painter. Uh, what were your latest works or 
some. Oh, the latest verdict, it's, it's two years ago because uh, since this time I'm only uh, uh, dealing with music. I stopped a little bit this other creativity side, uh, and uh, in the moment I'm living more for music and, uh, and for Grave Digger. Okay, a couple of kind of weird questions from local rock bands, but you musicians understand each other better. Yay, I'm Max from Free Villa, and I got a question for you guys. Have you ever dug a grave? Yeah, for sure, I, I did it. Because for the last video uh, we did uh, the uh, Hell Funeral, uh, the, the former keyboarder H.P. Katzenberg and I, we, for the video we, we made a grave. We was in his garden and dig a grave, yes? I dig it. <laughs> and another one. Have you ever realized that grave digging is the last aid for mankind? Oh, I think uh, digging the graves, it's, uh, it's also in human beings because uh, everybody will die someday and he need a grave or you can burn him. But uh, for, my, for my side, I want to be in a grave, I think it's better, it's warmer. Okay, could you kindly draw a dog, a hell dog, for the magazine? The hell dog? Thank you, thank you so much. So, that was it on his, on his rock dog. Bad dreams. See you in hell. <laughs>